Welcome to Bridgeport United Methodist Church. We're grateful to have the opportunity to worship together. We're beginning also back in person today, and it's wonderful to see uh, the faces in the pews. I say God is good. You say all the time, God is good. All the time. All the time. I say that to myself every day, and now it's a joy to be able to say it with others uh, who are here uh, in this holy space with us today, and also for all of you who are uh, joining us and have been so faithful to continue to join us uh, via the live stream. We're grateful for the opportunity that God gives us not only in person, but for the gifts of media uh, today. We want to remind us always that you can spread the word. Children are welcome. We do have child care available, but we also have Learn While You Worship. Uh, there are stations at both entrance ways. There's crayons that you can take with you, a bulletin for different age groups that they can follow along and learn some things from the scriptures while they worship. As we begin this rebuilding process together, we want you to know that children are very welcome here uh, in, in any regard that you want. We have nurseries, we have children's church, we have you sitting in worship with the bulletins. Whatever your choice is as a family, uh, we support you and we're grateful for it. We remind ourselves at Bridgeport United Methodist Church that we are a Matthew 25 church. We are a community of faith focused on being in ministry with and for the least, the last, the lonely, and the left out. This is our primary task. Jesus said, when you do it to the least of these, my brethren, you do it unto me. We strengthen ourselves for this task in worship and prayer and study and go forth to share in Matthew 25 ministries. One of the ministries that's been quite active and all of you have seen on the live stream worship, our virtual choir, being able to still bring those gifts together and present an offering of worship to the Lord. We invite you to hear and you can follow along with the words that are there in your bulletin. We invite you to hear, I choose love.
Amen. We thank all of those who helped make the virtual choir a possibility. Uh, the credits for that appear on your screen if you're, if you're tuning in via live stream. Uh, but it's really more work than you think. Each individual is recorded uh, separately. And then Mark Allen takes that and puts it into a, uh, edits all of those voices together to help make it an offering of worship. Uh, because, uh, as you know, public singing and that sort of thing is, is not uh, recommended at this time. But you get to see a 40-person choir. And again, Sarah Carr Parsons and Larry and all of our music persons, we appreciate greatly uh, the efforts that they're putting in and will continue to do so. And we'll enjoy uh, those pieces as we move forward. Our opening hymn is there in the bulletin. We'll invite you to, to sing softly. Uh, some of you, we really want you to sing softly most every time. Uh, but uh, we invite you to say the words or sing them softly. Uh, Sarah will be leading us. If you're tuning in by live stream, the words to the chorus will appear. Here we'll be sharing verses 1 and 3 together. Let us stand together as we share. I'd like to point out too those children's bulletins are also good for some of the adults you know I see Mr. Tom's back there some in the balcony crew right I'm glad you're preaching a message of love because we're getting really hard on our congregation this morning all right welcome again let's bow in prayer together thank you father for this opportunity to worship together with you the last year has been a journey there have been moments of confusion and difficulty and loss. Even amidst the darkness, there have been bright moments of celebration. And today, Lord, we stand before you again in your house. What a journey it has been. We pray now, Lord, that your spirit would turn our hearts toward you, that you would help us to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set prisoners free, Yes, Lord, it's been a journey for us, but help us remember that your journey from Nazareth to Calvary was also very difficult. However, despite the difficulty, you caused blind men to see, lame men to walk, and dead men to rise again. You gave men a spirit of singing while yet in prison. As we have gathered this day to celebrate the good news that you have given to us through Jesus Christ, Remind us that it is our purpose to offer that good news to others, not only in words, but in deeds of love and mercy, peace and justice. Father, thank you for each of these present this morning and for those worshiping at home. We offer names of people and situations which have been heavy on our hearts for your healing mercies. Be with all of us today. Give us hearts of great joy and courage to serve you all of our days. 
We pray today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. I can't tell you how heartwarming it is to look out and see you. And uh, if you're visiting by a live stream, we invite you to join us. We've got room. Uh, yes, it's different. We got masks on, and Ben and I have this barrier here between us a little further than normal, but uh, uh, that's, that's okay. Uh, I really got choked up during that hymn, uh, just, to, just to know that we are together again, lifting up the cross of Jesus Christ. What a difference it makes. Your stewardship also has been remarkable. We've been able to uh, make second mile gifts to many of our frontline mission projects because you've been so faithful. Uh, if you're here in person, they're offering baskets at the uh, entranceways. Uh, if you can continue to use the e-giving tab that's there on your screen, or you can mail your donation in. Also, we want to always invite you to go to the website and scroll to the bottom, and you can register there uh, for devotional emails sent out Thursdays and Saturdays every week. Uh, we would love to have your email registered there. Also, this evening, we continue our live stream event of our Lenten evening services. That will be live stream only this evening at 7 o'clock. Through it all, a journey with Jesus of Nazareth. We invite you to grow in your faith in that regard. And also, during this time, as you've been watching, we also try to update persons on uh, various losses within our church family. Today, we especially extend Christian sympathy and prayers to Betty Hager on the death of her sister Mary and to Marlene Hastman, Hastman on the death of her mother, Betty Michaels, keep them close if you would. Down through the generations of time, it's been the very basic beliefs of the Christian faith that have sustained those who went before us and sustain us now. And we use the words of the Apostles' Creeds or others' affirmations of faith from time to time. Uh, this morning it is the Apostles' Creed. Let's stand as we share these words together. Again, you can uh, repeat them softly. Together, let us say what we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Continuing with our theme of love today, our wordy music, some of the words are printed there in the bulletin that you might hear the strong message of show us how to love. <laughs> So 
stand with me for the reading of our gospel this morning. This morning's gospel lesson from John chapter 3 verses 14 through 21. You may choose to follow along in your bulletin. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed." But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. That is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So here we have before us absolutely the best summary of the good news message of the Christian faith that was ever written. Martin Luther called it the gospel in miniature, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that those who believe might not perish but have eternal life. It's really a passage of scripture about decisions. And as we start this rebuilding journey together, I've always taught when you're building or rebuilding, it's best to start with the basics. Nothing more basic than this message from John chapter 3 because we learn not so much about our decisions 
but we learn about God's decisions. This passage of scripture is primarily, did you know, about the decisions that God has made. So Ben tells me, he sees the outline, which I've included in your bulletin for you. He says, here we are, first time back in person, and you're going to lay a five-point sermon on me? Goodness gracious. I promise you, you need to buckle your seatbelts because it probably won't be any longer than a two-point or a three-point. But there's so much here, and it is such a core of who we are that we need to hear as we begin again to rebuild ourselves, our faith, our church, our community, our witness, and continue that forward strongly, this basic message. What do we learn about God's decisions in this passage of Scripture? Well, first of all, we see the foundation of God's decision. The foundation of God's decision is love, for God so loved. The decision that he's made concerning you and concerning me, the foundation of every decision that God makes about us, is based in love. It's the basic, simple message of the Christian faith, but friends, that love has transformed lives for centuries on end. And if we ever compromise that as the foundation of our good news message, then we've moved afar from the message itself. Benjamin Freeman tells the story of going back to Chicago to pay tribute to a middle school coach. The coach had coached for over 40 years. Benjamin Freeman had been one of those as a child. He said people came from all generations back to pay tribute to this coach. And he said as he sat there and listened to person after person give testimony to the influence that he had in their lives, he said it struck me. Every decision that our coach made was made because he loved us. Freeman says, I can remember speech after speech. Guys, listen, wins and losses, they're going to come and go. But you need to know how important you are and how glad I am you're here. And one of the greatest statements that uh, was associated with the coach, he said, you know, to lose a game is one thing. But my greatest loss would be if I lost a kid because they never discovered just how much they were worth. I don't want their value to be tied to their performance. Friends, that's godlike. The basis of every decision the coach made, love. Love for those kids. Friends, God has loved us. That's the foundation of his decision concerning you. Good news for us. Good news to share. Secondly, we see the frame of God's decision. The frame of God's decision. For God so loved the world. Everyone. No one nation above another. No one ethnic group above another. No gender among another. Nothing. God so loved the world. Just as we are. The real world. Turbulent as it is. Yes, this world. God loved the world. The world. Maybe you remember the story. It's one of my favorites. A second grade teacher asked the students at the end of the year, she gave them a piece of poster board and said, I want you to draw some pictures of your favorite things that have happened throughout the year. And so they used their artwork and they drew several pictures on the poster board. And then she put them up front. And one at a time, she had the children come forward and she said, now I want you to circle what you would consider your most favorite of all. One little girl walked forward and she stood in front of her poster for a while, trying to decide. And finally, she just took the marker and circled the whole poster and looked at her teacher and said, all of them, all of them. Friends, when God sent Jesus Christ to the cross, he's circling all of us with his love. He's putting all of us in the frame. You're in the picture. Everyone in the world is in the picture because God so loved the world. (laughs) That's tremendous good news for us. Tremendous good news to share. Third, the form of God's decision. What form did it take for God so loved the world? That he gave his only son. Now friends, this is the scandalous nature of the Christian message. And I use that word strongly. It is the scandal of the cross. It's shocking that a God would sacrifice his own son so that he could demonstrate 
this wonderful love to all of us. It ha- didn't happen in any other religion. God sacrifices, becomes the sacrifice for us. This is the form that God's decision has taken. The form of a son going to the cross. The reason it's scandalous, because if, if those of you who do have children, and if you don't, you can imagine, what would you give for your child? Would you give your child up for a bunch of strangers that had sinned and wronged you? When I was living in Morgantown, I had friends there that, were, that knew Terry Bowden very well. I got invited at that time. Terry came back and did several smaller events and larger events talking. But Terry Bowden, the son of Bobby Bowden, the famed football coach, he tells the story of them being in church. The Bowden family, very Christian family, went to church every Sunday. Terry Bowden said all of us were in church. He had four boys, two girls, all of us filling up a pew. He said the preacher that Sunday was preaching on God sacrificing his son. And he wanted to drive the point home. So he said, for instance, Coach Bowden right there. Coach Bowden has four sons. He said, now Coach Bowden, would you sacrifice one of those sons for a bunch of strangers? Terry Bowden said, Bobby Bowden looked down the pew and he said, Which one? (laughs) Maybe one of them had been in a little more trouble than another on that particular thing. If you've you've had uh, kids, you know you would never do anything. Maybe when they're teenagers, you might consider it, but you wouldn't do it, right? God, the form of God's decision, his own son for you, for me, for the world. Friends, this should humble us greatly, push us to our knees, cause us to open our hearts and receive a message that can change who we are and how we live. That's the form of God's decision. Good news for us, good news to share. Fourth, we see the fruit of God's decision, that they may have eternal life. Now, I don't always throw a lot of this into sermons, but sometimes in Bible studies, and those of you who have been in Bible study with me, that word eternal life in the Greek, in the Greek language, words have tense. That word in the original language is in the present tense. The reason I point that out is not to show you that I know Greek or anything like that. Isn't that a wonderful message? In other words, the quality of life that can come to us in Jesus Christ begins now, in the present moment. The quality of life and the joy that God has for you and the fullness of gladness that God desires can start now in Jesus Christ. This is the fruit that God offers to all of us in Jesus Christ, the fruit of eternal, abundant, fulfilled, purpose-filled life. What a gift. What a gift. Undeserved? I'll admit it. Totally undeserved. You know, one of my favorite characters from sitcoms of old is Barney Fife, Don Knotts. I actually met Don Knotts on a few occasions in Morgantown, was there when they dedicated the boulevard and, and got to sit by him and pray uh, the prayer at the time. But I always liked Barney Fife because he seemed like he represented. Now, for those of you who are younger in the crowd, it's the Andy Griffith Show. Check it out on streaming or MeTV or something like that. Uh, your parents will be glad to uh, 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 put you through that for a half an hour or so. But Barney Fife represented all of us in some ways. Put his foot in his mouth, got overexcited, overreacted, Bumbled, stumbled, made mistakes, couldn't get things right, resigned three or four times, give up. You know the story. But how many times did Barney Fife end up being a hero? Every time. Why? Because of Andy's graciousness. Andy always seemed to shift things around so that Barney ends up being the hero, right? He's the one who saved them from the cave. He's the one who, shot, who, who saved the, uh, got caught the bad guys. He's the one with his picture in the paper. He's the one that the town's in the end's cheering. Even though he didn't deserve it, he deserved otherwise. Because of Andy's graciousness, there it was. I feel like that, you see, because I've missed the mark more times than I can count. What about you? I've mumbled and stumbled and put my foot in my mouth and said things I shouldn't have and made many mistakes just like him but out of the graciousness of God. This eternal life, this gift, this fruit of God's decision comes to someone even like me and even like you. That's the fruit of God's decision. Good news for us, good news to share. And lastly, we see in this passage of Scripture the finality of God's decision. God's decision is final. 
this decision that he's made to love you, to love the world, it's final. Nothing can change it. Nothing's going to change God's mind about whether he loves you or not. If that were the case, why in the world would he have sent his son to the cross? If just when I failed or you failed, he was going to change his mind and decide, nah, I'm not going to love them anymore. Wait a second, he gave his son. Nothing more final than that. Arthur Hornick says that him and his brother, like brothers will do, argued, sometimes like cats and dogs. He said, we shared a small room with bunk beds. Every night we would argue on who's going to get the top, who has to take the bottom. It was more exciting to sleep on the top bunk. He said, one night we were arguing about it, just going at one another, and our dad walked in. He said, boys, what's the problem? We told him the problem. Our dad said, okay, tonight you're on the top, you're on the bottom. That's my decision. He walked out. He said, as soon as he walked out, my golly, we went at it again. We continued. We weren't giving up. No way. That wasn't fair. You had a lot back and forth. Dad heard us again. He said, dad walked in the room. He said, guys, what's the problem? They told him again. We didn't like, no. And then he said, haven't I decided this? Didn't I decide? Yes, sir. Any questions? No, sir. Okay. Case closed. He walked out, top bunk, bottom bunk, all was well. It's always amazing to me, even in the religious communities and even in the faith of the Christian faith, how we want to argue about God's decision. You know, I want to decide who's worthy of love. God's decided to love. That decision's final. Jesus went to the cross. Yet somehow I want to contend with the decision. Who's in? Who's out? Who's worthy? Who's not worthy? Who's different? Who doesn't belong? And I feel like God in Jesus Christ going to the cross, that's God walking into our midst and saying, hold on a second, people. Haven't I decided this? (laughs) When it comes to my love, haven't I decided He has, and that decision is final. He loves us. He gave his son for the whole world. Eternal life's available. The decision that God has made is final. Now, the only thing left is for us to decide to respond to the decision that God has already made. That's God's decision What's yours? Let us pray. Lord, we're grateful for the love that you've poured out so extravagantly on our behalf. We are humbled to think that you went to the cross for us. Help us on this day, O God, to receive that love anew that it might transform who we are individually and as the church. And then it would strengthen us to share that great love with all people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Reflect upon these things for your own faith walk. Invite the love of Christ to dwell in your hearts. Open yourself that God might continue to shape you and mold you into who he would have you be in living out that love each day. Reflect prayerfully upon that as we stand and share our hymn together. You'll see one of the verses that's printed there. We'll sing that. Sarah will sing an intervening verse, and then we'll sing this verse again. Let's stand as we share.
It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. It has been good to be in the house of the Lord. As we continue to rebuild together, invite others to join you. Step at a time, a little bit at a time. We continue to come together as a community of faith. Friends, God has loved us with an amazing love. We receive that love with gladness and joy. We go forth to share that love with all. In his name, we depart to serve.